I'm thinking about two men who are fairly successful, similar background, educated. They worked for a corporation for many years, and they were among many people that were laid off. Two guys who were very good friends. One went out looking for a job for several weeks, along with the other one, and they faced disappointment and rejection again and again and again. They couldn't find any work. One guy stopped. He became discouraged. He stopped going. He stayed home looking at television, became very argumentative and toxic with his wife, drinking beer, getting on the phone, talking to his other negative unemployed friends. And he just gave up. One guy said, it's not possible, it's over, I'm finished. I can't do it. I can't make it. He surrendered. I've faced rejection again and again. I'm not going anymore. There are no jobs out there. But this other guy, he felt that in spite of the no's and rejections, in spite of how bad the economy is, in spite of what the newspapers are saying, that it's possible that somebody somewhere will give me a job. He just kept going, thinking it was possible. What was the difference between the two men? Eyesight and mind sight. Eyesight is judging on what you see. Judging according to appearances. But mind sight is how you interpret what you see. The other guy kept looking for a job everywhere he could go. Every time he could get an opportunity. Kept asking people, networking, checking the newspapers every day. He went to a place and said, look here, I tell you what, if you can't hire me, and I know you can use my talents, abilities, and skills, I don't want to sit home and do nothing. Just, just let me do some volunteer work. You don't have to give me anything, all right? I just want to work. I want to be busy. The guy said, okay, it's on you now, but don't, don't expect me to give you anything. It's okay. This guy came in and worked. He was the first one there. The last one to leave was the best employee there. About four weeks later, one of the top managers quit. They were looking for a replacement. Guess who they selected? This other guy. This guy who was volunteering his time. He got the job. A lot of y'all, if you keep going the rate you're going right now, when you die, you're going to have a whole bunch left. You're going to die with a whole lot of ideas left. You're going to die with a whole lot of energy left. But man, when I'm running, there are times when I run and I get to the end of my run, I know I ain't done nothing. Why? Because when I finish, I got too much energy left. I got too much strength left. I'm still, I'm still breathing normally. I know I hadn't put my all into it. I'm asking you to know what your limits are, all right? Because you got to be able to measure where you are because you can't get to where you're going if you don't know where you are. You have to be able to measure where you are. But once you measure it, we got to hit that wall. Once we measure it, we got to start squeezing so we can get more out of it. And then once we hit that wall, we don't quit. We don't give up. We push a switch called will and we start using our willpower. We go into will. Yes, we tired. Yes, we're hungry. Yes, the mind is saying give up. Yes, it's saying quit. But we cannot quit because we realize we have not reached the goal yet. This is not the goal. This is not what I dreamed about. This is not what I said I was going to do. This is what I talked about. This is not what it looks like. I, I got to squeeze. And then once we get past that place, once we get past that 30 minutes, or that 35, or that 40, or that 45, or that 50, and once we get into that hour with our will, we become comfortable with being uncomfortable. We no longer thrive to be in the comfort zone. We no longer place ourselves in positions that make us feel good. We no longer put ourselves in positions that make us comfortable, that gives us that warm, fuzzy feeling. Because listen here, boo, some of what you want, some of what you trying to get ain't in the comfort zone. And so if what you want is not in the comfort zone, you got to come out of the comfort zone to get what you want. We've been going through several stages. We talked about self-awareness. Who am I? Asking that central question in one's life. 
looking at your strengths and your weaknesses, getting some evaluation, determining what it is you want out of life. Then we went to the next level of self what? Self-approval, approving yourself to do the things that you like to do and going after the dreams that you like to go after. And we know when we don't approve of our dreams because of the fact that they stay up in our minds. We don't act on them. We procrastinate. We come up with a variety of excuses on why we're not going into action. And then the next level is what? Self-commitment. Going for that dream. Going for those goals. Deciding to do the things that are necessary to bring about the changes that we want to bring in our lives or what we want to bring in society. And then after that, we are now to this level. And this stage is what? self-fulfillment because when you are involved in commitment when you are implementing your plan of action you're going to produce some results you're going to have some victories that you can feel good about and it's a time of celebration so what happens when you hit the level of self-fulfillment first of all what we want to know is that self-fulfillment is unending and should be viewed in that context Robert Shula says it best when he says success is never-ending so that means that we never get to a level where we feel that there's nothing else for us to do, that we've achieved a certain number of goals and we figure that we're through. No, no. You don't want to stay there and celebrate too long like a lot of people do. When they do something they consider outstanding, they go around talking about what they used to do. See, let me tell you, I used to do this and I used to do that. Excuse me, used to bees don't make no honey. What are you doing now? What have you done for me lately? Go around telling me about what you used to do and who you used to be. What does that count for now? Nothing. What are you doing now? You're still here breathing. That means you've got some more to give. Doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter about where you are, doesn't matter about what you have, doesn't matter about what you've done. Life is about growing, it's about being productive, it's about stretching, it's about challenging yourself. So you start looking around and decide, hey, hey, wh what else do I want to do? What, what got me here? It's a time for celebration, but also a time for reflection. What got me here? What worked? What did not work? What do I need to do to repeat so that I can get the same kind of results in other areas of my life? If the goal is to improve my health, if the goal is to improve my relationship, if the goal is to improve my income, if the goal is to improve something in society, what is it I need to do? Now don't get confused with what you do with who you are. Don't trip. Don't go on some type of ego trip about talking about how bad you are. None of us do anything by ourselves. Develop an appreciation for external support as well as good fortune because all of those things play a role. And the other thing is don't go overboard celebrating. Uh, Kipling says it best, you must meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. You look at it, hey, I did it, I, I feel good about that. Now you're moving on to the next thing. Things did not work out the way you wanted them to work out. You didn't produce the results you wanted to produce. Hey, miss that. Win some, you lose some. Next, moving right on. Don't confuse who you are with what you do. Let's go on to the next level looking in that particular area. You return to the area of self-assessment. You start looking at yourself and evaluating yourself. Now, what are some of the elements or the characteristics or the qualities of people who are fulfilled, who, who live a life of fulfillment. What are some of the things we can look at about them? I think number one, make your mind fertile ground for the seeds of opportunity. I think if you want to experience a sense of fulfillment, you've got to have an open mind so that ideas can come in there and take root and grow. So part of beginning to have fertile ground, you know you got to break that ground up you got to break up that hard crust because if you don't see to fall there and the wind can blow them away the winds of doubt when you're set in your mind and you refuse to grow and you're not open to new ideas new methods new ways of doing things if your mind is already fixed you become stagnant you can't grow you can't have a sense of fulfillment you become extremely cynical and negative about everything you know it all so you want to begin to look at life and have a sense of curiosity, not know-it-all. You want to keep learning, keep growing. Realize that we had a theme. You never find out how much you know until you find out how little you know. And there are some people you can't tell anything. 
They have all the answers. Oh, I've already done that. Larry D'Angelo was telling me, he said he was on a plane and he was observing two men talking and he, the guy was um, reading a magazine. He looked at the guy next to him and said, would you like to um, read this magazine, I'm, share this magazine I have? No, I read that before. Don't like it. Don't like it. Okay. So he had a newspaper. He said, um, what about the USA Today? No, I read that before. Don't like that either. Try that once. Don't like that. So they served them some food. And he said, would you care to have anything I have here? Because the guy wasn't eating. No, no. Try that before. I don't like that. And um, he noticed guy had only had one child. What Larry was trying to say is that a lot of people go through life prejudging things. How many of you don't like buttermilk? Raise your hands, please. How many of you raise your hands and never taste buttermilk, please? And I'm one of them. I just don't like the way it looks, all right? I might be missing out on something, all right? So many of us count ourselves out of things prematurely. You don't know what the possibilities are up in there. So you want to be open. You want to continue to learn. You want to continue to grow. You want to begin to know that there are unlimited ideas out here waiting for you to latch on to them. And if you don't take advantage of them when they come your way because you're so close-minded, do understand somebody else will. And we've all had ideas that we did not act on and looked around and somebody else had the idea and gone with it. So be open and receptive. Next thing, if, in order to live a fulfilling life, become involved in life. Live your fantasy. Most people go through life not living their fantasy, going, sitting up in the bleachers, looking out on the field, looking out into the arena, wishing that they were down there, just fantasizing, seeing themselves running with the ball. I used to do that. I used to always see myself at a basketball game. One second to go, Les Brown comes down court. He looks to his right, looks to his left. He's the only one that can do it. Dush the basket, goes in, Les saved us, and people picked me up and carried me off.